so that is, you know, it's an experience where you go in, you change something, you jump back out. But when you're moving around your site, then the overlay isn't as useful. You don't really, you don't really want to keep that same separation. You actually just want another gate from your sites back in. So if you open up the menu and you go to the content page, it doesn't use the overlay at all. You get like, you get the whole interface, um, and you get. Uh, yeah, you, you get you get the entire page to use, and it, it doesn't use the overlay zone. So this is maybe the compromise that we've reached, at least out of the box in Drupal 8, because there is a benefit. In some cases, I, I think maybe it was a mistake just enabling the overlay for everything, just having it on every link. Uh, but I think this is a good path to go to still keep that value of jumping in, jumping back out again. So I think that's actually really valuable. Okay, that's your way done. Box and layout initiative. Okay, um, so the box and layout initiative is, is a pretty ambitious initiative in Drupal Core to kind of change how content is placed on a page. <coughs> so, there's some, so in Drupal 7, this content here is made up of completely different components. So you have the, the search block, that's, that's a block, the navigation block, that's a block. Then you have the logo, that's a, that's a variable passed through to the HTML. Same thing with the, with the site name. Uh, so you have this kind of combination of components and how they're, and how they're placed in the system. Like some things you can do for blocks, some things you can't, some things you have to go mess around with HTPLs. So there's not a lot of consistency. And another problem with, with Drupal, at least Drupal's core block system, is that it can only really handle one layer. Uh, a theme can have like you know several regions, and you can place things in those regions once, but you can't really change the layout completely or place them in different regions uh, in different situations. And this and this works great if you're making a blog or a simple site that only has one layout. But uh, for more complex systems, it doesn't really work. And there, there are a fair few country modules that deal with this. But the box and layout actually tries to deal with it in, um, in Drupal Core. Uh, and the good, well, the good news is that a lot of the back-end work has been done on this, so all the code has been written, not all the code, uh, a lot of the underlying code has been written to get this kind of functionality in. <coughs> but the UI is not really there, so if people can say, I, I, they, they, they declare certain layouts, and they pass them into Drupal, and Drupal understands that as the layout and how it looks, and then the idea is that a user can select a layout, for a certain content type, and then it will pass that back and it will put it on this, in this beautiful way. We're not there yet. Um, I wonder if I can show you what we have. Okay, never mind. What I will show you is where the box and layout initiative aims to be. And the best thing I can show you for that is Panopoly. Does anyone use Panopoly? Okay, a few people. Have people heard of Panopoly much? No? Okay, so all you really need to know is Panopoly is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my this is my basic page. And you can see we've got like, you know, a main content bit there, and we've got a sidebar there. And you see along the bottom I've got this little toolbar here. So if I hit customize this page, it comes up with your know, content and sidebar region, and it allows me to pick up these blocks and drag them pretty much wherever I want on the page. This is a simple layout, but I can drag this to the sidebar, and this over here, and I can change the order of them around here, just by dragging and dropping. And you hit save, and it's done. And you can change, you can define multiple layouts. So you can choose any number of layouts here, for example this one. And you can drag them around to the right place, and hit save, and it updates that page with that layout. It's uh, it's pretty impressive, and you can test it out on simply test from me. Just typing in Monopoly, I think it works exactly well. I also think Pantheon, uh, and I just found the free site with Monopoly on, and that's really good. Um, no, it's a, it's a big distribution, and a lot in it. Uh, but uh, similar to the inline editing interface, uh, it just kind of, kind of destroys that separation between front and back. You can kind of modify, modify front and so how is this? Uh, how does this uh, it's a panel, right? It's based on panels, yeah. But they're not panels? 
Yeah, it's, yeah, it's got panels working in the background. I think you can get to the panel interface. But uh, I think it layers a lot of stuff on top. Well, there you go, know, yeah. Yeah, so it's like the modules in a, in a distribution. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just know it's interesting. It has a potential to deal with. Okay, potential. <laughs> panels is this, this uh, overview, isn't it? I pass it on my <laughs> sort of. I heard no, they, no, I heard they talk a lot together. Yeah. And they hang out a lot. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're friends. I, I just know a lot of people that kind of No. I feel that oh sorry, okay. Uh, that's what a market looks like when you know that's it's fine because he wouldn't want to <laughs> Can I can I just ask if eight is gonna be more sort of from the structured seam approach rather than just being able to sort of move oh, everything so about? Whether it's gonna have more like regions that you define from the seam layer. That's the idea. So to the make idea it is that these modules can define regions and layouts together instead of just defining regions and then pass that information into Drupal so you can expose that into the UI. So yeah. then the user could decide to choose layouts and then put this in the UI instead yeah. of having to write a million, you know, you can go. Uh, like that. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, the tour module, this is amazing. <coughs> okay, um, let me just show it to you first. <coughs> I go to the view. I'm going to do the examples. I go to edit the view. <coughs> this is the view from the pool. Yes, this is a demo. Okay, yeah, this is a demo of the view from as well, I suppose. Uh, it looks the same, but it's. Um, we're working on loads of stuff that can make it better for new users. So what you'll see on the top right, just, you can see like a question mark, it also says the word tour. And what happens when I click on that, is I get like a guided tour around the views edit page, the different components that work there, um, and how they're meant to be used. Uh, and this is a really nice introduction for new users uh, I know when I started learning views, I didn't really like something like this. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a great functionality to have, and it's also, a, the tool module is a framework in itself. So it allows other country modules to define their own little guided tools when you install a module. And it's also something that we're looking at adding more to, to more pages of Drupal out of the box. So probably when you first install Drupal, you get little fields like this popping up saying, you know, this is the extend page, it allows you to extend it from the things, uh, and that kind of stuff. Is that something that's more to the Exactly, yeah. That looks really good. Is this uh, something you turn off before you get to the clients? Otherwise, they take a tour, and then... <laughs> and then you're out of job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's just a module you can turn on and off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's useful in some situations. Uh, and I guess the conditions of when a tool will be shown, uh, I think that still needs to be changed a little bit. Ah, okay. Um, I'm not sure how well I can demo this apart from just making my screen a lot smaller. But a lot of the work I've been involved in is making the Drupal interface. Uh, usable on small screens, uh, which is which was a challenge in itself because we haven't really considered any of that uh, when doing any of Drupal's UI before. But the toolbar module is great because that works um, fast responsive and that goes down to smaller screens. And <coughs> you know, all the other pages to make them touch friendly, you know, have big, big touch areas. Uh, so that, that was a lot of work and there's 
There's a lot of benefit there, I think. Ah, so anyway, here we go. So, this is pretty new. I don't have a lot to say about it, apart from that you should check it out. But there's been a new star guide developed for Drupal's admin interface. The, um, the UX leads of Drupal, Boyan and, and Roy, and uh, Brian Federick, because I've been working on this this proposal for a slightly tweaked uh, graphical language for Drupal 8, hopefully. Uh, so if you find this, uh, I've got I've got a link to the slides, you can find the links to it there. But they've defined, like, they've documented uh, a new style guide for Drupal with new typography, and down to it, you know, new fields, and they look slightly different, but the point is we're actually documenting our, our user interface, which we haven't really done before that well. Uh, so definitely have a look at it, check it out, your opinion, because it's a work in progress, and all that stuff needs to be implemented or something, so if you've got those skills, you can have a look. Okay, and yeah, that was just me completing some of the best on uh, definitely have a look at that because that allows you to try Drupal 8 out right now with the minimal effort. Uh, you can try out Slark as well, which is good to try out. How long does uh, it take to start it? Half an hour. Yeah, you've got a little timer at the bottom. And, uh, so even if you're still using it, you can stop. I think so, yeah. I think so. It has a feature that if you're still there using it, you can say extend. Like, oh, great. Yeah, you can yeah. say add 30 minutes as long as you're. As long as you're still using it. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Okay, yeah, so if any of you want to get involved in um, making Drupal 8 better, then there's a global sprint weekend going on pretty soon. Uh, there are cool mentoring hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays in IRC. And then there's the Drupal Ladder initiative as well. Uh, so if, if, you, if you feel like you can help out in any of these areas, I mean, I'm just, I'm not even a programmer, I just make things look better sometimes. Uh, then like, anyone can really help out, and I really recommend you do, because, you know, once, well, we only have so long before Drupal gets released, and that's the, that's the thing that we're using for the next couple of years, so, you know, if you've got time now, you know, it can really pay off in the future. That's the end. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice that I think we're like very smooth, like focused cases, you know, where you can help people out. Although when the view popped into an overland, it disappointed. I think they're on that thing. 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 I think